Hello everybody, I hope everyone's well. This video we're looking at body checking and signs that you may have a problem. So I'll be and I have been the first to admit that I have body dysmorphia, which means I see my body differently to how others see it. Many of you know about my fat loss journey. If you don't, I was 200 and 80 pounds and I lost 165 pounds and from that I was left with stretch marks I was left with some loose skin not as bad as other people's but it's still there and to me it's very prominent but to other people they don't even see it so they say but um, I definitely have body dysmorphia one example I give is I still think that I am heavier or bigger than I actually am but I only get the realization of how I actually look when I'm say in the gym or in a restaurant and I'm in the mirror and maybe a girl stands beside me that I think she's thinner than me or slimmer than me or looks better than me and when she stands beside me in the mirror I realize oh I'm actually smaller than her. And this happens a lot. I really think body dysmorphia is, is something I'm gonna to have to deal with for a long time because I still have such negative memories, I'm going to say, of when I was overweight. It was obviously a bad experience. I obviously hit rock bottom or I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, but for sure, body dysmorphia is something I deal with and if you haven't heard of body dysmorphia before it's a mental health condition where a person spends a lot of time considering the flaws in their appearance which may or may not be true and these flaws are often unnoticeable to others but as the saying goes we are our own worst critics so Body checking, if you haven't heard of this before, you may not have heard of it, but I'm sure you've probably done it at some point. So body checking is a part of body dysmorphia or it can go hand in hand with body dysmorphia and it's very, very common. Uh, some might say because of social media and uh, societal influences. So if you've never heard of body checking before, typically it's where someone has obsessive thoughts and behaviors regarding their physical appearance. Typically, it can stem from someone having an extreme obsession with their body weight or a specific body part which isn't necessarily apparent to others. So. Unfortunately, if you're someone that deals with body dysmorphia over time, we, I think many of us know it can lead to harmful eating behaviors and patterns as well as eating disorders if you don't actively and consciously try to keep yourself in check, um, which is easier said than done for some people. But it can also cause people to start over exercising, which isn't always healthy and can cause further cravings and hunger and even sleep issues and make the cycle worse and even more challenging. And another way it can manifest is that people can go over and above with trying to correct or to fix their perceived flaws with the likes of plastic surgery or, salar or SARM selective androgen reuptake inhibitors and even steroids and hormone replacements. So um, this can be quite problematic if you don't learn to keep it in check. Now it's important to pay some attention to our body image, but at the same time, it can be harmful to obsessively check in with your body and your physical appearance throughout the day. And some people do do this. Some people will constantly look in the mirror all day, every day. The majority of us probably do it in the morning when we're getting our makeup done or putting on our clothes. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that will consistently do it throughout the day, that constant self comparison. So here are some body checking behaviors. Some of these might ring home with you and if they do, hopefully you can reflect on them and create some awareness um, around your habits and your mental self-talk. So the first one I'm going to discuss is comparing yourself to others. 
especially those on social media. I do this. That's why I wanted to discuss it first. Ever since I had my weight issues, because I was, I, I would say, bullied so much and constantly called fat or fat girl or insulted or why can't you be like so and so I was constantly compared and comparing myself so even now there's still an aspect of me that will compare myself to other health professionals on Instagram or influencers or um, I mean they have amazing bodies but a lot of them is very unrealistic and a lot of it's not even true and I know this but we can't help but compare ourselves sometimes to other people. Another um, behavior of body checking is looking in the mirror regularly while purposely looking for flaws. Another one is pinching or squeezing or pulling at certain parts of your body to assess your body fat levels or your flaws. Um, I will do this sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. I'll pinch the loose skin under my arms uh, and it annoys me but I think over time it's gotten better. So constantly comparing photos like before and after or pictures of yourself when you were younger or you thought you looked better. Um, the before and after photos can be very helpful but constantly comparing yourself to them this is um, body checking. This is one of the behaviors. Another behavior would be weighing yourself multiple times a day, which is, I can understand why people do it, but that's insane. Your body is going to be very different first thing in the morning and last thing at night after you've drank three or four liters of water or fluid and you've ate all your food and maybe you haven't had a bowel movement and maybe um, you've been weight training or whatever. Um, weighing, so weighing yourself multiple times a day, that is a sign that you may have some body checking symptoms or behaviors happening. And then agonizing over these small scale fluctuations, especially if they're happening across a day. Um, if you weigh yourself before breakfast and you're 140 pounds and then after breakfast you're 143 pounds, well yeah of course because you've just filled fluid levels and glycogen levels and uh, all that fun stuff but this can stressing over stuff like this is not a good sign and then repeatedly evaluating how your clothes are fitting specifically on an hour to hour basis again that goes a hand in hand with the last two points that if you do fill up on fluid or food or maybe your menstrual cycle is coming. Yes, your clothes are going to fit a little bit tighter as well. But for some people, this can really get to them. So it's okay to do these things from time to time. But when it becomes more often than not, or it becomes over obsessive and happening regularly, then this is when it can become harmful and potentially lead to an eating disorder or the other fixes like I mentioned earlier. So believe it or not, eating disorders are some of the worst mental health issues out there. Eating disorders are recognized as seconds to opioids when it comes to damaging our mental health. And I have clients that are genuinely unhappy when they look in the mirror and they cry even though, in my opinion, they look amazing, they look fabulous, but this is how it can affect people. And one other thing to consider is that this obsession over your body and trying to perfect your appearance, it can affect your quality of life as well. Uh, it can affect your relationships and the people around you. You may avoid family events or social situations, you may have increased anxiety, irritability, you find that you argue with your family or your partner or people more often than not and you may even feel depressed. If any of this rings home to you, I recommend you speak to an expert or therapist. It's like any other disorder, this will take time It'll take courage. You will need an honest, realistic talk with yourself and have a plan to support both your body and your mind going forward. 
I want to wrap this up with one of my favorite quotes. And that quote um, is from, I believe, Naomi Judd. And it basically says, your body hears everything that your mind says. Basically, we become what we tell ourselves we are. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope maybe some of this resonated with you. And if you do feel that this could be a problem for you, that you do reach out and get the help and support that you need. Bye, everyone.